What's going on guys and welcome on into the TC Trading channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about long straddles here. It's an option trading strategy that is a bit more advanced than just buying a call, think the stock is gonna go up or buying a put, think the stock is gonna go down. It's a way to kind of play both sides and we're gonna explain what that means here in this video. So make sure you're jumping down below, subscribing to the channel, hit that thumbs up button for these tutorial style videos. Let us dive right in. We're gonna do an example on this platform on Webull. We'll, we'll walk you through an example of how this works, how to go ahead and buy it and when to close it out and stuff like that. But really quick, let's dive into what it means. It's pretty simple. It's actually not very complicated. I know we had past videos going over credit spreads, debit spreads. I think it was a little more complicated than the long straddle. So let's talk about it. So first off, what is it? Well, in this situation, what you're doing is you're buying both a call and a put. So you're going long a call and long a put. Now, to someone who is new, that may be like, well, why? Because when you buy a call, you're you're betting on the stock to go up, you're bullish. That would be going long, then going long a put. Well, you're technically buying a put, even though, right, going long a put still means bearish. You're bearish on the stock, but that's kind of the terminology. You're, you're buying a put, you're going long a put. Now, if you were shorting a call or shorting a put, that would technically mean that you're selling a call, selling a put just kind of the terminology there. But you're doing that on the same stock or asset, let's say it's an ETF or whatever it is, with the same expiration date and the same strike price, okay? So that's what you need to understand here. So let's say you're looking at, you know, Apple stock at the $150 strike price, you'd be buying a call there and also buying a put at the exact same strike price and maybe the expiration is this week, maybe it's next month, maybe it's in a year, right? You'd be buying that with those expirations in mind. So let's start to think about it, right? Here are the key takeaways. You guys can read this from Investopedia. You can screenshot if you would like as well. So we have to start understanding now is why we would use this. Well, we would use this because we're expecting a big move. Now, if we're gonna use the long straddle strategy here when it comes to options and the stock sits still or barely moves up or down before expiration, it's not what we want. We want something that's going to move. So this could be a good idea for an earnings play. This could be a good idea for a stock that's gonna announce some data soon. This could be a good idea for, let's say a stock that's made crazy moves over the past couple of months, a short squeeze stock. Well, it could keep squeezing and go even higher, or maybe the, the short squeeze is over. Maybe it ends up falling back and it falls back big time, right? So these are the types of situations that you wanna be looking at, or at least potentially thinking about the long straddle strategy. So here's a perfect representation by Investopedia of what we're talking about, okay? So we are picking a strike price that's right here in the middle, okay? The way we make money on this strategy is the stock either moves a good amount in the upward direction or the downward direction. If the stock sits still, we're not gonna make any money. So you guys can think, we're buying a call, buying a put at the same strike price, okay? If we were just to buy the call, right, the stock would have to go up to a certain degree, we make money. If we buy the put, the stock goes down, we make money. Obviously, depending upon, you know, time decay, depending upon the strike price and how much it costs and whatnot, right, yes. Now, okay, we want to buy both at the same time, so now it's going to be a little more challenging, right? So now, the stock needs to go up a lot more or has to go down a lot more for you to make money by the expiration date. Why is that? Well, it's because you're buying both. So let's say we have, and we're gonna dive into some examples here in just one second. But let's say we have an option premium for, let's say Apple, that $150 call, let's say it costs $1. And let's say the $150 put costs $1 as well. Well, that's gonna cost you now $2, essentially per contract, right? It's gonna cost you now out of your pocket, $200 in, in option terms, right? Because we're buying the rights for 100 shares, right? So we now have to pay $200 out of pocket, but now we need a bigger move in the upward or downward direction because now we have to recoup what we paid based on those premiums, right, in that move. So let's say we're buying the 150 calls and Apple goes up. Let's say over the next week, let's say that expires next week. In the next week, Apple goes up and it goes up a lot. Not so fast, just because it's going up a lot doesn't mean we're gonna make money. Let's understand what has to happen here. It's now like we essentially paid $2, right? So Apple technically now has to go to 152 
or higher for us to break even or make money by the expiration. Now, if it goes to 152 before the expiration, you're going to have some additional value of those options. For example, you'd be able to get out of the options with more value in terms of the time that's left to the expiration. But just intrinsic value wise, we need to get to 152 or higher for us to make money. For us to really make money, Apple needs to go to like 153, 4, or 5, and that's where we can really start to see the returns. And the exact opposite on the way down. You have to understand, because we're buying both options, you need a bigger move. So the risks, right? Stock sits in this range, and it just kind of chops around, and it doesn't make a huge move, and we lose money, right? That's one of the risks. Next one is time decay, right? The stock may move in your direction, but... If it takes too long or those options are expiring soon, that time decay can kill. Another thing to also note is we have a video on the channel going over Theta, going over some of the Greeks. I would highly recommend you watch those videos or even watch that playlist on the Greeks when it comes to options. It'll give you a better idea of how they're priced and how they move and how things will move. So this way, when we're going after a strategy like this, you've got a better fundamental background before you start jumping into this. So now let's look at SPY. This is the S&P 500 ETF. We're going to be diving into this and showing you guys a example of how to do this. So what we're going to do is go up into the top left and we'll make sure to zoom in once we get to the option chain here so you guys can see this uh, as clear as possible. So we see the market's down past couple of days, at least when we're filming this, market has been down past couple of weeks, you know, downward trajectory, right? downward trend. Now, if we go to the option chain here, let's just say, let's do something that goes out, um, at least when we're filming this fairly short term, let's go out to like next week when we're filming. Um, okay, so these are gonna be a little more expensive because SPY is pretty volatile. It's a pretty high priced, I guess, stock ETF in this case. And so it could move five, ten dollars in the course of a week very, very easily, very easily. It could happen in a day, honestly. So, okay. You see today we're down a half percent. It's down $2. So you can see the volatility here. Now up at the top left, we have the option strategy. So we are looking at single options. So you can kind of visualize it this way, but let's just say we're going to go with something like right around, let's say $430 strike price. We think we're going to either see a big rebound because we've been down quite a bit in the past couple of days. So either we're going to get a bigger flush out and SPY is going to come down, you know, lower into the 420s, 425, maybe even 420 down to the lows that we saw back here in July, right? Either SPY is going to go all the way down there like that, or we're going to get a rebound and we're going to bounce right back up to, let's say that 50 SMA, which is up here over 440. So we want to look at these 430s and say, okay, it seems like a good price point. I think we're going to get a big move in either direction. I'm going to play these. Now, if you look at the put side, the right-hand side, they're trading for like $4.50 and the call side, they're trading for about $6.85. So in order for you to understand how much it's going to cost, you have to add both. So this is going to be a little more pricey, right? You're adding both of these. So it's going to cost you over $10, right? Total, which is going to be net out of your account over $1,000 for this to kind of this strategy to play out for you to take this position okay now uh, we're in the single option we're going to actually go over here to the straddle option and this is going to simplify things down because it's going to kind of combine them so again that 430 here it is so here here we are so let me click on this and here's the 430. It now opens up the order entry. I'm going to bring this up really quick and I'm going to now make this bigger for us so we can see this uh, a lot better. It'd be easier for us to see. And I'm going to go to the graph, okay? We'll come back to the table here in just one second. So now, guys, look at this. It looks like very, very similar to that thing we just saw, that graph we just saw on Investopedia, right? So here we go. Uh, let us, this is what it's going to look like. I would highly recommend you start here when it comes to entering your position. It's going to be very easy to visualize. We'll talk about that here in one second. The table, okay? So what are we doing? We're looking at a straddle here. We're doing a long straddle. We need two legs, so we have to buy the calls and buy the puts for the exact same strike price. Let's go through that, okay? First leg right here, we have the 430 calls, October 8th expiration. Uh, we have 10. I'm going to just select one. We don't want to buy 10. Let's go with just one. You can change that quantity up at the top, okay? This is going to make it easier, okay? Now we have a limit price of what that's trading at right now. This is combining the two. So that's what you're going to get. It's going to combine both the price of the calls and the price of those puts. That's your limit price you're going to get right there. The best way to kind of see this would be to go back to the single option strategy, check the price points you're looking at, see what they are before you enter this in because things could move obviously when the markets are open, right? That will change what limit price you may need to use if things are moving up or down. Now, 
We got the put in the bottom, same exact thing, one. Okay, now let's go to the graph and let's actually take a peek at how this is gonna work. So you guys see what we're doing right here? We're buying, and we're buying the same thing, puts and calls off this 430. Now this graph is going to tell us intrinsic value. What does this mean? This is going to tell you your break even, your P and L, if SPY expired or finished at any of these price points on this graph in the middle by the expiration. So, okay, so it's not perfect because if we move a certain direction before the expiration, you may be, you know, green, red, it may be a little bit different, but it's good to get a good sense for intrinsic value. So here's what we're gonna look at. Now, this is telling us that we need a move pretty substantial move in either direction. So again, for us to break even, we're gonna need SPY to make a move up over 440. For us to break even on the downside, that was the upside. On the downside, we need SPY to go under 419. Now we just talked about, hey, you know, we're looking right now and we're saying, I think SPY is gonna either go down to the low 420s or it's gonna go back up to the low 440s. Pretty much what we have now, what we can see by entering this position in, we can see, is that this may not really be a good idea because we have resistance up around where our break even is and we have support down around where our break even is on the on the downside. So this is telling us that we are going to lose money unless we see an outlier move and we break resistance to the upside or we break support to the downside. That would be what gets us that move in the direction to give us a, a profitable trade here. So I want to make sure you understand that. So before you dive in and before you start doing this stuff, you have an understanding. You're not just, you know, buying straddles randomly just because, okay, I, 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 there's no guessing here. I don't have to guess the direction. All I have to do is pick one and a big mover will, will make me money. The volatility is important to a degree, but you need a lot. You know, what you're seeing here is, is for this specific example, you're going to need some significant volatility, some outlier volatility for you to make money here, okay? So now you see, as we push through, what's your downside here? Your downside here is essentially what you're paying for it, right? So roughly here, it's gonna cost you this 1134, and it tells you on the bottom of the screen, I know it's a little bit tough to see. It's gonna cost us $1,134, okay? Our max loss could be that level, and our max profit is unlimited if SPY goes crazy high, or it goes crazy low. For me to enter this position in, what I will then do is I will go ahead and make sure it's straddled by, and I would place my order once I have everything set the way I want to, I would click place order. Now, when you're going to exit your position, what you're gonna notice is you're gonna see something very, very similar in the, let's go back to the remove this. You're gonna see something similar in your position section of your account. You'll go to the left-hand side, there'll be three dots. You'll click on those three dots on the left-hand side of your position, and you'll go to close that position. Now you may ask, okay, when do I close? When do, what do I do? Well, if you're green, if, if you've gotten the outlier move to your liking, then go ahead and close that position out, set your limit price, same exact way you'd buy it, just set your limit price and sell it. That's it. Now you'd want to make sure you do this because what's going to end up happening at the end of the of the end of the expiration is you're going to have essentially you're going to have uh, one option that is a dud and one option that's a winner potentially, right? So let's say spy, right? We bought those 430s on spy, let's just say. So as we speak right now, let's say let's say spy closes right here at 432 by the end of the week. Now we wouldn't have made money because we didn't get the outlier move up or down. But let's say by our expiration date, spy closes here at 432. Well, our 430 calls are going to have some intrinsic value. They're going to have two dollars of intrinsic value. So they'll be at least 200 bucks that we can salvage out of this position. But what are our puts going to have? Our puts are going to have no value because SPY is above that 430. So you're going to want to make sure you close out your position because you're going to have an option that expires in the money and you're going to have one that expires out of the money. So you have to make sure you close it out and you can close it all out in one shot by going to your positions and then selecting sell and close and that's it. It would look very similar to me going into like a, a, my current position on pen right now and going ahead and looking to sell. I set my limit price and I would click place order uh, and I would sell my two calls that I currently have on pen. So it'd be the exact same thing here. It would just be that you're closing out a straddle. So there you guys have it. Let us know in the comment section down below your thoughts. If you're looking to utilize a strategy like this in your own trading, there's a lot more where this came from. I would highly recommend you just test it out. Check out that graph on Weeble when, when you're going across and testing out different stocks to trade because it may visually make a lot more sense once you see the graph and you can see where your break even, you can see where your green is, you see where the stock needs to go for you to make money on this type of play 
I would highly recommend you give it a chance, give it a try for yourself before you start messing around and diving deeper into this. Don't just start buying random straddles because you need to have an understanding of what's going on behind the scenes before you ultimately take that position. Thank you guys so much. We're gonna leave links and resources down below like always. Definitely check out our playlist tab. We have videos going over options. We have videos going over the Greeks. Highly would recommend you have a feel for that before you dive into something like this. And we'll have more videos going over different option trading strategies. We want to cover a bunch of those going forward in the coming weeks. We'll leave links to our other two channels as well down below. If you like the stuff here, go check us out over on the other two channels. Any other courses, resources, all that stuff, always down below if you're interested. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.